Hello everyone. Welcome to the project Password Manager. Now, let us see the problem statement of this project. In the real world, the only threat to us is the host by the criminals residing in our area. But in the digital world, one would be prone to the threat by any person who resides millions of kilometers away. So, in this digital era, our lives are in the finance and the biodata, everything is being digitalized through electronic media and internet. So, this makes us more vulnerable than ever. So, this makes the cyber attacks more and more. So, most of the people that are frequently prone to cyber attacks are the ones who aren't aware of about importance of having a stronger password. Having a name without any other special characters could easily be hacked by the hackers. So common attacks strategies used by hackers is a password is guessing attack. So by using hacking tools such as brute force algorithms where it tries each and every character in the 26 alphabets. So later a fully efficient computer using the hacking tools can try out thousands of passwords per second. So we should maintain at least a special character, a uppercase and lowercase letters, which makes more time to crack the password. So the application creates an awareness among the users about the importance of having a stronger password and to store these passwords, thereby making it easy for the user to retrieve information from a database instead of remembering each and every password. Now let us talk about applications and scenarios of this project. Most of the users who claim that they have been robbed were found that they have created passwords that just happen to have alphabets which commonly turn out to be their names or dictionary words, mobile numbers or digits entered sequentially, less characters less than 8 etc. Every year millions of dollars were being washed away towards the hackers due to the people's negligence towards the security. In our application, we help the user in creating a password that isn't complicated enough to remember and at the same time good enough making it possible for the hackers to crack it. So we also suggest passwords based on the phrases given by the user which could help the user to set a good password automatically without putting a lot of effort. Along with this creation, we even store the login credentials given by the user that are secured in our database file. We can be using the access the information anytime when, whenever it's needed. So we are going to create a passcode for this application. So only the user having the passcode can, can avail the services. So the tech stack involved in this project are Python, PyQt5 and DBMS. And PyQt5 is used for creating applications, mostly GUIs known as graphical user interface and DBMS is well known as database management system. Now coming to sample input and output, you can see that this is how the GUI looks. So whenever user enters his name and password, if the password strength is less than the suggested, so by using the keyword option, you can just give his keywords and I, I mean the phrases which he frequently use and will suggest few passwords which have more strength and takes more time to crack. So this, are, this is the GUI and the appearance of the GUI with the password manager security. Now let us wrap up this session by saying thank you. Hello everyone. Welcome to the project password manager. Let us start our project by designing the GUI of the application. So open QT designer application and you can see a pop-up stating template slash forms. So click on main window and click on create. Now you can see a empty screen has been created and named as main window untitled. So main window acts as a placeholder for all the widgets that we are going to use. So I'll classify this QT designer by change saying what properties are in this QT designer. So let us start from the left side of the panel window that is widget box. So it has a great collection of widgets such as layouts, spaces, 
buttons, item views and many. And on the right side you can see it has been divided into object inspector and property editor. See, basically object inspector is where if you add any, any button, I mean any widget component, it will it will add into the object inspector so we can have a view how many widgets we are going to use and we can also rename the object names here. And let us come to the property editor. In the property editor you can change the font size, the font and make it bold and you can change any of the font stylings and basically it acts as a style sheet of a widget. So now let us start our project by designing a title for our project. So for making a title we need a label. Label is a uneditable text where user can't interact with the label so it can't be edited. So let us start our application by giving a title to it. So our title will be as password manager. So write that as password. Now that we created a label you can also see in the object inspector it has been created. Now let us add a background color to it by adding a frame that is in containers. So you can go to containers and you can find a frame and place on it. You can see that and you can also resize any widget by just resizing this. Now if you want to add background to a label, add a frame and right click on it and you can see a change style sheet option and click on add color and click on background color. So you can have a great collection of color palette and you can select any of the color. In this case, I'm using black and you can see that I'm applying the changes and you can see it has been applied. So now let us add the color to the label. So same, right click on it, change style sheet option, add color to the background and click on yellow. Make it apply. And now place it on the frame and resize the frame and place it on the top. Now let us add some font and make it font big. So let us make the font 30. And we'll make it bold. You can see that it the changes have been applied as so resize the widget resize the label to now let us start labeling the input widgets that we are going to take from the user so in this project we are going to have six labels and six text edits or line edits so basically line edit acts as a user where can user can interact with it and give the text or remove the text from it so let us add a line edit so let us add by line edit we will be needing six line edits and four for the input and and the other will be for it has our project has been divided into two sections where user can retrieve data and user can store the data so we will be dividing this GUI by two phases like we will be giving a partition and so other two line edits will be using where in the search I'll show you one by one and for this four line edits we need four labels Now let us add a push button so that an user can fill the details and click on the push button so that we can retrieve text from it. And as I told you we will be dividing into two sections. So let us add a vertical line that can be found in display widgets. to line let us name our na label names so 
first one will be the username so write it as username the next one will be password next one will be the website the keyword Click this button and submit. Now let us change this font. Get 14 to 16 or 12 of your choice. Get 12. for the website for the keyword now let us make our text bold Now we have completed the part of submit button so let us keep for search. So again we will be needing two more labels, two more line edit. Yeah. So let us rename the label names by website name. As passcode. Now let us add a new widget called text edit where a paragraph or a big text like where you can see in line edit only a line, one line of edit can text can be added but in a line edit you can add a paragraph so we will be displaying our output in this line text edit so let us create another push button for search so here we are I think that's that's it so GUI is done. So let us jump to the coding part. Now that we are done with designing the GUI of the application, let us save the file by hitting Ctrl S and save the file as password.ui and make a directory so that we can pass every file to that one directory and we can use that when we are creating a database. So let us save this file and open command prompt or your, ch your choice of editor so that will convert this .ui file to .py file. Now let us write the command to convert the .ui file created. We will convert it to .py file. file sorry. So Python pyuic5 minus x. The file name in my case is password. UI and we need to convert this file as output file name as it is also of your choice so make it as password dot py it handle so you can see that it went to the next line so that there are no errors so let us run the file by you can see the password dot py file has been created in my directory let us run this file Now you can see that it gave the GUI as output. So now let now let us test whether the GUI is working or not. It's taking the inputs. Yeah, but it's the submit buttons and the search buttons are not working. So to make it work, we need to add some functionalities to the submit and search button. So let us start coding the submit and search buttons in the .py file that we have created now.
Now that we are done with converting the .ui file to .py file, let us start giving some functionalities to the submit and search button. So to give some functionalities, we need to connect the submit button to a function. So first we will connect the button. So this command says dot push button dot click it connect. Click it connect is used to connect a function and to the button name push button. So same for the sub self dot search. We are connecting the search function that we are going to write now is being connected to push button underscore two. So now let us write the function f submit right set and print clicked. Same for the search. Right clicked search. Here clicked. Now you can see that let us run the application and see whether uh, click it submit and click it search are coming in the GUI, I mean in the output screen. Now let us click submit. Let us click search. You can see that in the command prompt, we are getting the outputs at click it submit and click. Now let us include some more features and get some input from the user and print it in the command line. Now let us get the input from the user by using self.lineedit and self.line get text. So basically we have four labels as I told you before line edit is given for the username and Line edit underscore two is given for the pass. Basically, pass means password. Web web means website, and key is the keyword that we're going to use while generating passwords. Let us say what is dot text. Text is basically to retrieve text from the user input screen. So now let us print user web. Let us see and run whether the output is coming whenever we print this. Now let us see and give some inputs and we will see whether it is printing in the command line or not. Give password as some PC. So let us submit this. You can see that it worked. It came with Raj, ABC, and Facebook and Def. So you can see that we can we can we are we are now able to retrieve text from the user input screen. So now we can do the same for the search button as well as. So let us do for the submit button. So in the submit button we are only going to have two text fields. So let us give them names as so let us give the names as PAZ and WE. Basically WE stands for website and PAZ is for the passcode. So let us get let us retry the text by using dot text and print whether it is coming or so let us again run the application. Now let us check right. Passcode will keep some text and passcode. Let's click the search button. See, boom, it's working. Text, comma, web. Now we'll check both by giving the submit and the user. Let's give ABC. Let's click submit. See, it worked. You can see that it also gave ABCD as the output. I'll increase. I can see that it also gave A, B, C, D and text and web at the same screen. So both the submit button and search buttons are working now. So let us give some more functionalities by 
circuit by reading the inputs and giving some conditions to it. Now before moving to the coding part of the submit and search button, let us establish a connection between the UI and the SQLite database. So to create a SQLite database, initially we need to import SQLite 3 and then we need to create a database which holds n number of tables. So to create a da database, we need to write sqlite3.connect and write the database dot sqlite. After that, we need to create dot cursor to point out each time in the table where we need, where we are going to add values. As I told you, database a collection database is a collection of tables. Now let us create a table on the password sqlite database. We'll create a da database name as password and table name as pass so in the past we need to have some columns as a table we have columns and rows but the same proceeds in the database also so in this in this format we'll create a table in the pass in the database named password so we need to write create table table name and uh, column names and the data types that we are going to use varchar represents both numerical and string data types so we we'll, we are be, we are going to create three columns that are user pass and web username and password and the web website name so as we are dealing with the password manager we are going to need three columns and the three three play a vital role while fetching data and inserting data so let us insert some random values like raj as the username password as and the website name facebook just run this and see whether it saves the changes or not see it went to the next line so there are no there are no mistakes now let us see what happened in a database now you can see that let us see whether when we execute a command select star from pass now let us print the output so before printing the output we need to fetch the data and store in a variable so for fetching data we will use a command called fetch all So cur.fetcher helps us to fetch the data from the database. So let us print the answer variable. Oh, it worked. So you can see that Yuvraj ABC Facebook and has been stored in a form of array so this is how you store the values and retrieve data in the eighth line we have insert the values and the ninth line we are calling all the values in a database to print in a form of array so star helps us to indicate all the columns to be printed in the in a certain variable so now let us see if we ask if we name a website name and we need to get the output as username and the password so what i am saying is basically we are going to only pass facebook not as all the columns so if we pass facebook we need to get yuvraj and abc let us try that just name the website name as facebook and let us execute select star from pass where web equals to facebook so we are going to pass w as a variable in form of an array to fetch the data and store in a variable so let us again print the output boom it again worked you can see that i only passed w as the website column name only facebook but it gave the output of yuvraj abc and facebook this is how you retrieve the whole data by only passing the column name now we'll use this functionalities of this database and we 
will add to this the submit and search buttons in our database by creating a connectivity to the GUI. So let us see while we create a database and before that we'll be importing few important modules such as dot SQL Lite few widgets that we are going to use now like to hide a password we should never show our password so we need to hash the password with star marks so to do that we need to import Q application Q widgets and Q push button and Q message box these widgets contain the ability to make the password uneditable I mean to hash the password to star so that it is not visible to the user now let us add the hashing technique for converting the password to star marks while we are writing the password in the g so to do that we need to use that echo mode it's a syntax which is used to convert to stars so we need to perform this for a line edit so we need to import the line edit line edits from qt widgets dot q line edit dot password so this makes our GUI more like more interactive with the user when he's writing the password it will be safeguard so we have two password columns so we need to use for the both line edits so one is for password and one is for line edit which we created for passcode so passcode is used to encrypt the GUI when like no one can use the GUI without the permission I mean without the password so we need to use a passcode also so that we created in the line edit 6 now let us check whether it's working or not you can see that I have given you can see the password it's giving in asterisk marks I mean star this is how you encode the password and make it and not visible to the user whenever is typing so no intruder can see the password so on the same way as I told you about the passcode, we can also do the same. I can also see that same thing happen. Now let us print while printing. How will it? Uh, how will it print in the command line? Let us print. See, it's working. So I have gave in the in the column of uh, search search button. I have given A B C D F. And in the submit button, I gave HH. So now you can see that you can also encode the hashed one to the normal text, the spy QT file. So let us include this functionality in the submit button so then we can easily use this operations and make the password more, I mean, make the password more safeguarded from the vulnerables. Now that we are done with the setup of the database. Let us know more about this project by adding few security features to the user while storing the password and retrieving them. So when user wants to create a password for a website and store, he needs to follow few important rules such as length of the password should be greater than 8 and it should contain at least one uppercase and lowercase followed by a special character and numbers and adding these helps the user to safeguard him from the hackers and after this following the set of rules only it allows the user to store the password in the database and if the user faces difficulty to create a password we also have a two additional features where user can choose a keyword which is of frequently used words in his daily life so we can generate a random password using the keyword or in such a case where he don't have any keyword like that we'll also suggest few random passwords so which also bypasses all the set of rules that we are going to keep like uppercase and lowercase so this 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 is the flowchart of our project now let us integrate with the search and submit button in our code Before moving to the coding part, let me explain you how to implement this algorithm in the coding part. So basically we will be initializing five 
boolean variables that are of length of password uppercase lowercase and special character and number so we will be initializing this all as boolean variables and we'll check if all the things change to boolean true then only it will go to the submit button so let us start the coding i can see that let us see before we have uh, before by using the dot text command we we extracted a text from the user so let us implement the algorithm by using the boolean variables now as i told you before we will be using boolean variables like so hasnum says that the hasnum is a variable that take care about it is having the number or not and hasup says is it having a uppercase and has low sees lowercase and has special looks about any special characters are missing or not and has length miss basically it will find out the length of the password if it is greater than or equal to it it will show as true or else false so length is a function to find out whether the given string is i mean we need to to find out the length of a string we use length now that we created the boolean variables let us initialize the if else statements and know whether is a like classify whether he is following the given rules or not so we need to include a string called special characters because we can't we don't have any library to find out the special characters so these are the special characters that we use for use day in the daily life so user should use any of the one the special character so before this we will be importing a model called random so right import so the reason we are using random is to generate some random alphabets and letters now you can see that oh, let us give some if else conditions you can see that i have gave some if else condition before you know that BASC holds the value where password has been entered by the user. Let us iterate by using the length. What happens here is we are going to iterate the length whole string and we are going to store each character in the string, the variable called C. And if it is following the rules which we have implemented, it converts the Boolean variable to true before all are initialized as false. So, you can see that for i in range length of pass so basically range function uses to get a i mean a range between 0 to 5 or like that so if the length of pass is 6 it will generate a range from 0 1 2 3 4 5 at the position 0 to character we are going to store variable c so at each iteration i is going to change and we are going to whether each character is following rules or not as we told you before c dot if digit is basically sees whether the, the the alphabet is containing i mean the string the character in the string is following the rule is digit if digit knows whether if the given character is a digit or a alphabet so if it is a digit it will convert as num to true so basically we are goal is to convert all hash num hash up and hash slow and hash special to true so like this is to get used to characterize whether it's an alphabet or a digit and is upper sees whether the given character is an upper in uppercase or lowercase and the same way is lower finds whether the given character is in lowercase or uppercase and the same as i told you before we have created a special character string basically it checks whether the given character is a part of the special character so in operator is used to see whether the given character is in the special character string i'll show you the special character string that we have created so in operator returns as a boolean variable and says whether if you have entered user entered a, a explanatory mark it checks whether it is in this whole string and it will also return a true or false so if it also followed it will return has special is equal to so now let us keep an if condition and we'll check whether what all condition it passed 
and if it isn't passed passed so we should say user that it is not working so you should you choose another password which is following all this condition now see if you see that in the 163rd line i have installed a total line which checks whether all the six features that are true or false so has num you know that it follows dot is digit and has up is dot is uh, is upper and has low is lower and has in it uses in operator to check whether it is a special string having a special character or not and has len checks whether it qualified the basic it's greater than or eight length of the password so after checking if it is successfully entered inside the box we will be showing a entry successful dialog box you have seen many dialog box in your daily life basically dialog box appears when you when you create an alert for a function so to import this dialog box before we have imported a widget known as view message box view message box helps us to create a dialog box so dialog box appears as a pop up whenever you submit some information in some forms basically when you apply any any engineering form you can see that it gives a pop up that are you are you confirm that you are entering this website like that so to create a new message box we need to create a object of it so we are going to create a object of new message box and store in message box variable so after that we can set an icon called informative it just creates an i icon in the message box that i am going to show after running this application so we are also going to set text because as it passed all this condition we should say the user that it is successful or else we are also going to write an else statement where we are going to write it is not successful because you are not going to follow because you fail to follow this rule so next thing is message dot set window title it's just it will set a title like password manager i'll show you in the gui message dot set standard buttons is basically creating ok and cancel buttons in the small box finally it will return message box dot exec so to exit from it you should just need to cancel and it will close the message box now let us run the application and see whether it's working or so now let us run the application write some username keep the password as a capital a b date zero zero hit submit you can you can see a pop-up stating that it is successful now you can see that it showed entry successful so we have completed first phase of project by completing the submit button now let us just integrate the database and whenever it's showing the entry successful pop-up we should just write the code i mean we need to add the values to the database so let us write the code for the database so before writing the code of database in the password.py we can see that this is how we create and this is how we insert values so let us write the code in the password.py check whether it has been applied in the database so this is how you wrote the code for the saving the values in the table pass i'll, ex I'll show you we have created a table name pass in the password.sql so i have first connected the password.sql light to the con now then i told that for to execute insert the values in the table name pass which i created before and I, the reason that i wrote question marks here is to i should pass all the three variables at a time so i have created a tuple that holds multiple dynamic elements and whenever i pass this task variable it inserts the values in this table column name pass so let us check if it is working and let us check again in the database if we give the website name and it should return all the user pass and
let us give her the value now let us give the values as username as password as capital a zero date in the website we'll give as twitter hit submit and you can also see a a I mean, I mean a successful option now you can click on ok and close the GUI so let us check whether it has been applied in the database by, by typing website name twitter and see if it, it if it returns the value as my name and the username which I've entered we are we are successfully completed the submit button yeah it, it worked so you can see that it worked I'll show you. So basically, I just gave the website name as Twitter, but it ret it also returned the username and the passcode. So this is how you store the values in a database and retrieve in the GUI. So now let us focus on the search button, which helps to retrieve database. Now let us write the code for the search button. Initially, we have created a variable called PSet, which holds the value of the passcode entered by the user. And W is the website name where user tries to retrieve the password for the particular website name. So we use this PSA to authenticate whether the user is trying to log in or not. So initially we have wrote a if statement which tries to authenticate by giving a default password as root. So you can change the root of any of your choice. So you can change this root and keep any other name and you can authenticate the user. So after authentication of the username by the pass PSZ variable, we will be connecting to the database by using the con.sqlite3.connect password.sqlite which we before created the database. So after that we are going to installate the cursor and we are going to now execute the command select star from PS where web equals to the WE variable. So that is the reason we have created a WE variable which holds the website name. So before that we have in the search submit button we have created a Twitter account I mean a Twitter uh, entry where I have given the website name as Twitter and it, it retrieved Yuvraj and the ABCDF the password. So now let us try the same by seeing the submit button I mean the search button if we try to give the Twitter Twitter uh, website, if it is giving the URAJ and ABCDF, it should print the same. Now let us run the command. So to print, I mean, so there is a case where if user tries to upload the same website two times, so we are going to iterate rows and rows. So rows it has the value of two, I mean, if the in the, in the worst case, if user enters two passwords for a Twitter account it is going to show in it is going to store in a multi-dimensional array and we are going to print by one by one one row by another row using the for loop and we are going to see that now so let us run the code and in the password I mean in the right side you should enter the website name as Twitter and passcode you should only write root or else it will say it like I mean it doesn't run so we are also going to initialize a, a else statement where it authenticates whether it's right or wrong if it is wrong it's going to give a pop-up that your, your the password the code which you entered is wrong so let us submit so there is an error so the reason it it, it gave error is because we have wrote the table name wrong so we need the table name as PASS now let us run the command here the terminal can run that now give the website name and passcode as yeah it worked now it also returned Yuvraj and the password and the Twitter name so this is how you fetch the data using the search button now as we created a text area we need to fill that so let us print the same input same output in the search search uh, text i mean that 
the search button it is a text area so we will fill this output and fill the set text uh, we we'll, by using the set text command we are going to fill this area so let us write the code for it now let us add this line line of code where it it basically where we are as we have seen the print statement so set text command used to display the output in the frame i mean in the main window which we have created in the text area that at the search button place so i just created a username and i have i have used slash t to increase the tab space and password and slash n and slash n are used to go to the next line and now as i told you before it is going to make a multi-dimensional array so i told only to show the latest input as the latest input that has been installed to the database so minus one helps us to get the last element in the multi-dimensional array and at the zeroth position we are going to get the username at the first position you are going to get the password so as we in the database i am going to show in the database we have stored the column names as user pass and web so in the same order we are also going to get the output but without the website name so let us run the file now let us give the website name as twitter password code as root and let us search see it worked we have username password and my username and the password so this is how you retrieve data and show in a text area now let us write the else block of the search function so whenever the user enters the wrong passcode of the search query so he will be getting a warning stating wrong password and please try again so to execute this we need to use queue message box that we have used in some bit function so let us write else and as i told you before that queue message box so let us copy the same from the submit button and paste it here so so we will be first creating the object of queue message box and we are going to set icon and now the only change is we are going to make it critical before it is informative so in the submit button we are going to give some information to the user but here we are going to say it's critical because user entered a wrong password so later we will be adding set text command so basically as we it as we can print in the console also to display in the GUI itself so we should use set text command to display our statement in the GUI so we will be stating wrong password so please try again so to cancel this dialog box we need to add ok button and cancel button so let us run this application and see so you can see the output I mean the GUI so let us enter Twitter and passcode as ROO so it will trigger the else block so let us click search and now let us see oh yeah it's working so you can see that password manager is a title name and the wrong password please try again so the icon which you have sent is critical so it's the, that's the reason it showed as warning symbol and you can also the ok and the cancel buttons so now let us wrap up this search function and let us start writing the random password generator for the submit button now let me explain you the submit button first so basically we first took the input from the user by using line edit dot text the dot text is used to get the text from the user input and later we created four boolean values and we we judged whether the given password is meeting the standards or not and we used to we used dot is digit to whether to check whether he used a number or not and is upper for uppercase and lower for lowercase and special characters by using in operator so these conditions are important while we are using a random password so so after this we wrote if statement that checks whether all these conditions are correct or not so later we created a message box and showed
the password and now you can see that I have created an else statement and you can just now I have explained that how to generate the random password and this is how you do that like I mean you will be using two while loops and you will be keeping an increment counter variable at each iteration it counts the variable and chooses OR by using ORD and random generator we got the characters one by one and we are change, we are set we have set a condition until less than eight so this is the submit function as a whole now let us see a search function in the search function we have the first thing first thing is we'll check whether the passcode written is correct or not if it is wrong it will be going to execute the else statement so in the if statement if it is correct as the user so enters the website and we are going to store in the we variable so we are going to pass this to the sqlite query and it is going to fetch and we are going to display in the text edit that we have created or else if the passcode which entered is wrong we are just going to print the, the wrong password please try again so this is as a whole summary of the both sub both submit and search button Thank you now let us write the code for the random password generator so first import the random module at the top as i imported before now let us go to the submit button and write the else block after this if if statement so this if statement we are going to check whether he followed all the rules so if in case if he didn't follow let us write else now the goal is to generate random passwords either using the keyword given by the user or a randomly generated alphabets so as in the both cases we need a special character so make a special variable as a name you can create any variable name and let us copy the special characters that we have declared before paste it here now let us make a string called suggest initialize a variable i and in give a in initial increment as zero so our goal is to generate at least four random passwords for the given keyword or in random generated alphabets so i less than four will be the outer while loop and the inner while loop will be the length of the password so i have told you before the length of the password should be length greater than 8 so length of password is basically key so if the user entered keyword as greater than 8 characters we are going to just add the remaining characters such as numbers uppercase and lowercase or else in key will be given as a double code i mean the empty string so it depends on the user if user gives a string we are going to generate random password using the string or else we are going to give an initial i mean double quotes and we are going to add it so that's the reason length of key less than 8 so basically at each iteration we are going to increase the key length so if it is 8 it's going to get outside the loop and i will be incremented by 1 so total will get 4 for random passwords so let us write e equal to t e plus star of random dot rand int so rand int is basically it can generate integers between a range so a range is basically ord of a comma so i mean character a and ord of character set so ord is to convert an alphabet to a numerical value so it's going to give an ascii value for an alphabet so after that let us come out from the inner while loop and let us concat key by adding str of random dot rand in 
now let us give an range of numbers so our first condition satisfies in the length of the key should be less than 8 I mean after less than 8 only it will be adding to the suggest variable so for sure it will be greater than 8 and the next condition is adding number to adding at least one number to the password suggested password so random dot random will generate any number between 0 to 9 that is only integer so rand int is used to generate integers so after that we are going to write key plus equals to str of random dot choice so here we use choice because to take any particular alpha i mean particular character in a string or any array so as we created a variable called special it's going to take any of the character in the whole in whole special characters randomly so we are going to pass that variable here now let us make the first letter as capitalize so key dot capitalize so capitalize is going to make the first letter as capitalize so now let us append to the suggested one so as i created a variable called suggest so at the end of the four iterations its length is going to be four i mean four suggested password so suggest plus equals to key plus the next line so rather than creating four variables i have i am like the algorithm works by concatting all the four characters by line by line so we are going to use slash n so that at each iteration it's going to go to the next line and finally increase the i so i equal to i plus 1 or i plus equals to 1 are both same so the same logic i have used for key plus equal to str so this is the algorithm for generating random password now all spelling mistake now let us add few message box so to show whether these are correct or not i mean the after generating the random password we need to show the output in a message box which we have created in the submit button as well as in the search button so we are going to make again a queue message box object and we are going to just copy the suggest one and paste it there so as i told you suggest will have all the top four passwords that we have generated using random password now as we created a variable called suggest now let us show this variable with some rules and regulations like what are the rules that we have met to get the random password in a queue message box as the same so make the object of queue message box and set icon as information and set window title and now keep a set text command whenever as else statement will only trigger when the user enter password is doesn't matching the standards now let us as i told you we'll be giving some rules i wrote in a string i'll copy that you can see that uh, what i wrote is basically the password should meet the conditions so the basic rules at least one uppercase lowercase is one number and at least one special character and at least eight characters so we will be using two more new things that is known as set detailed text so as i made a string to show this in a detailed text in the queue message box we are going to use two new modules so to use that so this is the syntax for that so this is common for every queue message box ok and cancel and later set informative text is to set the suggested passwords and set detailed text is used to show the rules and regulations that we followed to meet the condition so set detailed text and set informative text these two are the important things that we need to show, show when we are doing the queue message box so let us run this application and see whether it's working or not so 
we can see that let us give the username as but this time first time we'll give the password as wrong standards like just write the username as the password also let us skip the submit button now you can see that a pop-up box came and it said the random password gen by using the random password generator it generated four passwords which match the standards and the one which i told to see the details of the rules which we followed you should click the hide details and if you click on the show details it will appear these are the rules and now this is the passwords that we have used now you can take any of this password and use this as the password and it will bypass the rules now we'll use the keyword option given now we'll generate passwords using the keyword now let us give the keyword as let us hit the submit button now you can see that it used my keyword uv and it generated four new random passwords so i think you understood how we did the random password using the keyword and without the keyword so this is how we generate the random passwords so let us wrap up this session by explaining both search and submit functions in a in a way like you can just revi revision revision the submit and search like what we did in the summary